because there's no easy oil anymore, people like Yap spend every day inventing new technologies, like the snake well, to get the oil that was previously impossible to get to. Yap van Balahoyen works for Shell. Heidi Ho. When we left the first episode of this series, we were discussing the massive amounts of energy in the form of oil that it's necessary to even build the infrastructure for alternative sources of energy. And if we wind up living in a world of declining production, will we be able to afford the investment of oil necessary to even convert to those alternative forms of energy. I'd like to start out this episode discussing another type of energy investment, one that may have a serious impact on our future. The first oil well ever drilled was dug by a fellow by the name of Colonel Edwin Drake in 1859. In of all places, Titusville, Pennsylvania. It was only 69 and a half feet deep. You practically could have dug it by hand. The well only ever pumped about 25 barrels a day. And Colonel Drake is another one of those historical figures that died penniless. But from an energy standpoint, in other words, the amount of energy it took to drill that well to 69 and a half feet, compared to the amount of energy that came out of it in the end, it was a heck of a deal. That relationship between how much energy you use up finding, drilling, pumping, transporting, and refining oil, to how much energy in the form of oil you get out of the well in the first place, is called NROEI, or Net Return on Energy Invested. Some people call it Energy Return on Energy Invested. It's important because it could play a major role in our future lives. In the 1930s, NROEI was about 100 to 1. By 1970, it was down to 30 to 1. Around the year 2000, 11 to 1. And some estimates say it might be as low as 5 to 1 now. If it ever gets down to 1 to 1, that's the zero-sum game. Because you're putting as much energy into finding oil as you're getting out of it. It becomes a useless endeavor. I'm by not any means a fortune-telling prognosticator of future events, but let's play a game we'll call It Could Happen. Let's say in the near future, by drilling much, much deeper, going to more remote areas of the planet, using high technologies like that upside-down drinking straw snake well, and geomagnetic resonance gablibulators were able to increase oil production by 25 percent to a hundred million barrels a day. Okay, I made up the gablibulator thing. But you get the idea. In the meantime, NROEI drops to two to one, we'll say. That means a third of all the oil we get out of the ground has to be turned around and put back into the process. We still get to keep 66.6 .6 million barrels a day, but there's the problem. Right now, in 2010, we're already using 80 million barrels a day. Peak oil production could be entirely false. It could never happen and we could still run into a situation where there is less oil produced than what's required to meet our needs. It's a future possibility that's interesting to consider. 
I thought I'd share a little concept of my own I call the widget theory. Let's assume for a moment that you own a factory making widgets. And when you add up all your production costs, each widget costs about $15 for you to manufacture. You can sell your widgets on the open market for about 20 bucks, make it a tidy profit of $5. Now let's say that in a short period of time, the market price for widgets zooms all the way to $40. Your profit margin goes through the roof. Now you don't know how long this situation is going to last or even what your competitors will do. Your natural inclination is to take advantage of the situation while you can. Open the door when opportunity knocks. That means you're going to run your widget factory 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as hard as you can, paying your employees overtime, and turn out every widget to sell you possibly can. The only reason that you wouldn't do this is if your widget factory was already running at full production capacity when the whole thing started. This widget theory of mine raises some interesting questions when applied to recent events in oil. I'm no expert, so I don't know the answers. On July 11th of 2008, the price of oil reached an all-time record high so far of $147 a barrel. While there was an increase in production from June to July of that year, it was only a paltry 1%. Was that possibly because the oil widget factories were already going at full steam ahead when the whole thing started? The politicians held hearings to find out who was at fault for these high oil prices. And all the while, the talking heads on the mass media were blaming evil speculators. Who were these speculators? And why did the price go so high? Is it possible they had some inside information, like they knew that demand was about to outstrip supply at the time? I'm no expert on these issues, but it is interesting to explore the possibilities. In the next episode of our little series, I'm going to share a theory with you, one that says that you might possibly have lived through the most profound moment in all of the history of mankind, and you didn't even know it.